been ages since I've seen a young watcher take to the glass so seriously. But I warn you, doing so could condemn one's eyes to glass all year round. There's a man. A man? An outsider. Step aside. Sebastian, please. It would do us both well for me to see. I've never seen an outsider before. Why does he come? I don't know. Perhaps he's the one we've been waiting for. The one to restore rain to our crops. I don't know. Or if not, who is he? What could he Sebastian, want? Sebastian, I know no more than you do. But as Chief Elder, I see it only fit to greet him with an immediate welcome. Grab the pitchfork just in case. Why must he come on my watch? Yours is as good as anyone's. Don't worry, Sebastian. A watcher's job is to observe and report, not to defend. I'll take it from here. Welcome, stranger. My name is Earl Archer. Lead elder here in Winterberry. What do they call you? From what village have you come? Perhaps he doesn't speak. I'll ask you once more. From what village have you come? Or have you not the memory left in that ancient head to recall such information? That's one way to explain it. Time is known to Fade the mind, is it not? I'm a wanderer. That's all I know. I apologize. It's just that we've had few outsiders pass through Winterberry in recent times. And we mustn't be too quick to accept those that are unknown to us. I don't suppose the name Elias Torn has any meaning to you. Perhaps this warrants a town gathering. If anyone were to see him before an official announcement were made of his presence, well, panic would surely erupt. I agree. Sound the chimes. I'll call on Gideon Wolf to conduct the assembly, and I'll meet you outside the old barn. along, huh? I closed the bar down for this, you know. Relax, Amos. It's not even noon. If anyone wants to drink that fermented cactus juice of yours, they can wait for a decent hour. I just pour the stuff. Dewey makes it. If you have an issue, take it up with him. Well, it ain't like there's a field of options out there. You try growing a half-decent crop of rye on only a few inches of rain. All right, now quiet! What's this all about, Wolf? Yeah. All will be revealed as soon as I can have order, please. Now, there is an outsider among us. He came by the Eastern Road. He's an elder and he claims not to know why or from where he has come. Sebastian Remy's holding him outside. How can you leave him out there with only a young watcher? 
Outsiders aren't to be trusted. Earl, you should know that more than anyone. She's right. Let us not forget what happened to your own father the last time an outsider came to Winterberry. I needn't be reminded of the horrors this village has endured. I lived it, after all. That's more than I can say for the lot of you. I was a very young man when the burning of our village took place. Not 20 harvests old, when Elias Torn first arrived. Perhaps we were too trusty, but when he used us and condemned us to servitude, we should have risen up sooner. But among the rebellion and our, our fallen kin, I discovered that fear not only inhibits us from our own freedoms, but the freedoms of everyone that crosses into Winterberry. We need to give every man a fair shake if we are to be fair to ourselves. What's your name? Are you the one the prophecy has spoken of? How do you intend to save our crops? We shall begin the questioning as soon as I have order. As a matter of fact, I believe I'll begin the questioning. That way you all get a chance to see what civility looks like. Now, sir, can you tell us what lies beyond the boundaries of Winterbury? Roads. And, and, and where do these roads lead? R roads that lead to villages. And how do the villages fare? Do their crops thrive as ours once did? <laughs> what purpose brings you to Winterberry? There, there's a familiarity. Ah, well then you've been to Winterberry before. This is asinine. I want you to sit down, Boom Feldman. Sit down now and keep your mouth shut until the uh, drink is off your breath. I can smell it from here. The man knows nothing. He's as old as time itself. Look, he even has a clock on his belt. Boom, either you shut up or Father I- Father Time, gather around everybody. It's old Father Time himself come to put us out of our pitiful existence. That sounds like the Remy boy! Jacob! Jacob! I don't, I don't know what happened. I only stepped away for a moment. What do I do? Oh, what we need here is a seamstress. Has anybody seen Diana? Diana! Here she is. I only sew fabrics. I haven't the mind to sew flesh. Or the stomach, for that matter. Diana, please! What we need is a doctor. There hasn't been a real doctor in this town since old Jasper passed away last spring. Somebody please do something! The blood won't stop! Thank <laughs> you. 
How did you know to do that? Medicine always came very naturally to me. You know, my father was in medicine. I believe you would have much in common. You didn't have to come, Sebastian. You should be with your family now. They'll be okay until supper time. I think a little rest is what they need most right now. It sounds like the old man has some resemblance to your father. Both have a keen sense for medicine, I can tell you that. My father was the greatest surgeon Winterberry has ever seen. They could be a similar age too, couldn't they? The old man and your father. What are you getting at? No. My father was slain during the burning, you know that. But his body was never found. That's what the town records say anyway. Perhaps when he called upon Torin to leave town, he took a blow to the head got lost in his own mind. This guy doesn't even know where he's been the last 50 harvests. Earl, isn't it a possibility? What is he doing? This building. What is it? That's Torrin's old home. He brought his clan here, took advantage of our goodwill and forced my father to build this home for him. When we rebelled, he killed our elders and destroyed our land with salts and acids. They say he scared the rains away. We haven't had a wet season since. The foolish ones say that. Now it stands as a relic that we may never forget what this town has endured. I hesitate to ask, but if the purpose of this journey is to find my memory, I suspect we may find it in there. Get out of here, Boom. You know better than to come around here. Earl, this door hasn't been open since as long as I can remember. Don't tell me you're gonna open it for an outsider. That's none of your concern. Law of the land states that no stranger who enters Winterberry shall be left attended by fewer than two town elders. Now, I may not be an active member of the council, but I sure as hell have seen enough harvest to qualify as an elder. Fine, you can stay, but disrespect us or this place even for a moment, and you're out. Do you understand? What is it? What do you see? I've been here before. This, this table, I, I recognize this table. And that trunk. Earl, please, the man just had an intimate moment with a long lost table. Boom. Take a look around, Father Time. What else do you remember? This pipe? Food, this bro stop! This broken down bookcase! What is that? I don't know. You mean to tell me you didn't search this place before locking it up for half a century? Of course we searched it. We didn't think we'd find a hidden door behind bookcases, though, but we searched it.
Killian Archer. This was my father's coat. Your coat. It's for my Aunt Abigail. You must have been on your way to send it when you stopped to talk with Torn. We do the honors. Dear Abigail, I hope this letter finds you well. Since I last wrote, we've had a visitor come to stay, Elias Torn of Middleburg. We've tried to show him the ways of the crops, but he seems more inclined to feast than to forage. He has shown a hint of self-reliance, however. Upon receiving a deep flesh wound on his forearm, he was able to cauterize it himself. I would deem it remarkable if the X he had burned into his flesh ever vanished completely, but it was a fine job nonetheless. Perhaps he'd be well suited as my apprentice if he stays, but if not, I'm afraid I must ask him to leave. Our community cannot thrive unless all members pull equal weight. I hope you and yours are well in Oakdale. With love, Killian Archer. Do you remember writing this letter? Boom! Take your hands off him! Torn branded his arm with an X. I don't care who this guy is, but I damn sure want to know who he's not. I'm tired of your outbursts and your unfounded theories. Get out of here! Away from my family! Unfounded theories, huh? What's so unfounded about this? I told you not to be so trusting towards an outsider! You let him in, and he came back to destroy us! Gather! What is it now, Boom? I was just at the old torn place. Inside the old torn place, Earl found a letter describing a burn in the shape of an X on Elias Torn's arm. See for yourself! This is Elias Torn, the man that stripped our soil and drove away our rains. We must offer the very life of Elias Torn, if for just the mere chance that we will have fertile fields once more. Boom, unhand him! Unhand the destroyer of Winterberry, the slayer of your father and so many others. He's old and weak. His memory's gone. Believe me, if I thought he was the man he was back then, I would tie the noose myself. But he isn't. He isn't even close. You're a good man, Earl, but there's a thin line between goodness and weakness. Although this man may no longer be of the mind he once was, it was his body that committed the crime, and it's his body we must condemn. Look. If anyone should want revenge on Torn for what he did, it should be me. But that's all it would be, revenge. It won't change the past. It won't rectify any foolish curse. Can you actually live with yourselves for killing this defenseless old man? Or can we be better than that and finally heal after a lifetime of fear and regret? You know, I look at that wound on Jacob's leg. It's hardly visible anymore. I still don't think it was right. What did it change? I mean, if anything, there's more fear in this town than ever. Some tribes are born to kill. Some aren't. We are not the killing kind. But I know that's what everybody thought they wanted in the moment. Even a small part of me was starting to think the same way. But to have that on my conscience, as they all do now, I just wish, 
I just wish they thought it over. You know, at the very least, I thought the rains might start again. But it's been a week and nothing, so. A curse is no more than superstition mixed with a bit of coincidence. No supreme being is going to reward us for taking vengeance on a defenseless old man, nor would one punish us for allowing him to harm the land in the first place. All we can hope for now is that somehow we can learn to get past this and go on with our lives.